So you're no stranger to um, difficulties and challenges and, and, uh, and you fight back. What, what motivates then the next giant challenge, which is uh, space travel? The governments that, that run space travel were not interested in you or me going to the moon. Um, uh, you know, they've only, you know, uh, China, Russia and America have only put 500 people into space since space travel began. And, um, and I want to go to the moon. I want to go to space and I don't want to. Um, uh, and, and so I thought, you know, let, let's embark on trying to build our own spaceship. Um, and so, you know, it's been a longer voyage than I thought it would be. I thought we'd be able to get it done quicker. Um, uh, but, um, you know, but, and, um, but it's going to be all the more satisfying when we pull it off, hopefully later this year. Welcome to the Spartan Up Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Race. We are talking about overcoming obstacles. The same way we teach people to get over obstacles on the course, we will teach you here on the Spartan Up Podcast to get over obstacles in your mind. In 2014, Joe DeSena and I recorded one of the first interviews for Spartan Up Podcast. It was with Richard Branson on his island. One of the things he talked about was his vision for a flight into space. Even then, Branson was talking about what a difficult journey it had been and all the obstacles he and his team had overcome so far. We now know the journey became much more challenging later that year. It's so exciting to see this incredible accomplishment come to fruition more than six years later. We decided to revisit the original interview with Richard Branson. Take note of his unique lessons about resilience, about fitness, about goals, about leadership, and about grit. And let us know what you think it is about his character that drove him to see this mission through. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Loran Oils. After your next workout, help soothe tired muscles with Loran's affordable, quality-tested, 100% pure botanical essential oils. Visit loranoils.com, that's L-O-R-A-N-N-O-I-L-S.com today and get 15% off site-wide when you use the code SPARTAN15 at checkout. Great news, I just swam to Richard Branson's private island. He's agreed to an interview and you're gonna love it. All right, well, Richard, Branson here. Uh, we're on Spartan Up, the podcast. Thanks for inviting us down to your island. This island is unbelievable. So, so it looks like um, you always go out of your comfort zone, right? Coming onto an island that was completely deserted, no fresh water, you didn't even have the money to buy it. And, um, and now you're sleeping on a tent on the beach trying to figure out how to get fresh water here. You do that often. You did it um, with the airlines. I, I mean, I was just somebody that... Uh, experience the bad experience of traveling on airlines. Um, I was actually trying to get to the BVI, to British Virgin Islands one day from Puerto Rico and American Airlines bumped the flight. And, um, uh, and so I went to the back of the airport, I hired a plane, um, I hired a blackboard. Uh, I wrote um, Virgin Airlines uh, one way, $29 to the BVI, I went around all the people who'd been bumped and I filled my first plane. And, and that got me thinking, you know, that airlines do bump people. They don't care about you or me, particularly in the air. And so we, um, so I then rang up Boeing and said, do you have any second hand 747s? No kidding. I mean, it was literally that you just sat in the airport and said, I'm starting an airline right now because I'm frustrated. Exactly. And I think most, most of the best entrepreneurial ideas come out of frustration. I think, you know, if you're, if you're um, frustrated about something, um, the best way of sorting it out is get out and, and do it and you've got yourself a business so so um out of your comfort zone right in a brand new industry probably going up against british airways american airlines at that time how how tough was that and how long was that a decade a couple of decades how, how? um well i was about 32 when we uh bought the first 747 and uh and you know i remember you know sitting down with Sir Freddie Laker, who'd been driven out of business by British Airways. And he said, um, you know, just three words you've got to remember when you're taking on British Airways, and that, that is sue the bastards. And it, very quickly, I realized that BA, you know, were determined to put us out of business. Um, they threw everything they could at us. Um, you know, they illegally accessed our computer information. They rang up our passengers pretending to be from Virgin when they were actually from BA telling them that our flights were cancelled and switching them to BA. 
Uh, they went through my rubbish bins looking for incriminating evidence. They went to our nightclubs looking into the rubbish bins there to see if they could find any needles so they could you know, spread stories about drugs in our clubs. I mean, it was extraordinary the lengths this so-called upper, upper crust British company <laughs> went to to get rid of its competitor. And we, we took them to court and uh, we won the biggest damages in, in uh, history and we distributed it to all our staff at Christmas time and it was known as the British Airways Christmas bonus and, um, uh, and it was um, a great fillip for the staff and, and it shut, shut British Airways up. They, you know, they, they now compete with us fairly, uh, toughly, and, 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 um, but uh, not, uh, not in the underhand way they used to do. So you're no stranger to um, difficulties and challenges and, and, uh, and you fight back. What, what motivates then the next giant challenge, which is uh, space travel? Um, you weren't bumped well, off a flight to the moon. <laughs> no, I wasn't bumped off a flight to the moon, but, but uh, the governments that, that run space travel were not interested in you or me going to the moon. Um, uh, you know, they've only, you know, uh, China, Russia and America have only put 500 people into space since space travel began. And, um, and I want to go to the moon. I want to go to space and I don't want to... Um, uh, and, and so I thought, you know, let, let's embark on trying to build our own spaceship. Um, and so, you know, it's been a longer voyage than I thought it would be. I thought we'd be able to get it done quicker. Um, uh, but, um, you know, but, and, um, but it's going to be all the more satisfying when we pull it off, hopefully later this year. Um, and, um, and we've got, you know, 300 wonderful engineers beavering away in the Mojave Desert. Um, They've, incre- they've created a beautiful spaceship, beautiful mothership, um, beautiful spaceport. Um, we've got nearly 800 um, astronauts in waiting. Um, and, you know, it'll be, you know, the mo- you know, the most exciting thing I've done in my lifetime. And, um, and you know, the rush of just the first journey. I mean, it, we're going to go from uh, naught to three and a half thousand miles an hour in, in seven and a half seconds. So it's going to be yeah, some trip. <laughs> awesome. And and you're the you're the first. You're gonna go up first. Yeah, I plan to go up first. Ho- hopefully with my children, and um, uh, maybe hopefully not with my daughter. But <laughs> although, or because I'm hoping she'll be pregnant. But but but, uh, I, I, uh, but if she's not pregnant, she's definitely coming with okay. my son as well. And do they know, do they know they're they're first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they they they're, they're, they fortunately they've taken more after myself than my wife. Um, uh, you know, I, I I'm quite an adventurous person uh and they're they're also very adventurous um you know we've we've done wonderful adventures together we've you know we 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 climbed Mont Blanc last year we kite surfed across the English Channel together um we ran 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 the um you know the marathon together um and then you know in a couple of months time um we're setting off on, on a great adventure together in in Europe um uh, which ends ends up climb, climbing the Matterhorn. So, um, you know, so we have some great, we have some incredible adventures together. And I suspect, you know, when we when we look back at things, it, it's those adventures that are actually um, more satisfying than anything else we've done in our lives together. I mean, and and it's you know, it's just a, it's just great to be able to have those incredible experiences with your adult children. So that's a big um, discussion within the Spartan community. Our, our uh, four million Spartans will uh, sometimes discuss how hard is too hard with children. We've got a lot of parents in the community, and, and I push my kids pretty hard because I want to get out and do things like you suggested, marathons. How hard is too hard? You, your kids are now in their 20s. Oh, they're in their 20s. I mean, let me tell you a story which, um, I mean, there was a 15-year-old Australian girl um, who... Uh, decided that she wanted to sail around the world on her own. Um, her parents were absolutely being crucified by the Australian press for allowing this girl, this girl to do this. Um, and I actually intervened and said, look, you know, there aren't many people in their lifetime that, that, that can have this kind of opportunity. Um, you know, let her do it. Um, and, um, and, you know, if she, you know, if she doesn't come back, she would have had the most incredible life you know, more incredible than almost anybody else on earth. And, you know, let, let her do it. And, um, and she ended up doing it. 
And of course, you know, because she came back, her parents were then became her heroes. I mean, they would have been zeros if, it, if she hadn't come back, where they were absolute heroes as, as long, alongside her. The press completely forgot about the fact that they'd, um, uh, you know, that they'd been uh, crucifying. Caught, caught crucifying them. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, my, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, it's awful when one, of the, when one of these things go wrong and somebody um, comes to grief. But, um, but I think those people who, uh, t you know, uh, um, who, you know, push themselves beyond their limits uh, get much more out of life. Uh, those people who say yes rather than watching other people do it. Um, uh, and, um, and it's worth, you know, it's, it, it's worth the risk. And, and um, you know, Ed Visters, uh, Mountaineer, says um, getting to the top is optional when he's climbing a mountain, getting down is mandatory. So when you talk about that, because I'm, I'm a big believer, we're big believers in pushing the limits and being completely out of, com I was out of my comfort zone this morning. Um, how far is too far? Well, you know, in business, uh, four words are very important, and that, that's protecting the downside. Um, and um, and when, you're, when you're embarking on a personal adventure, those four words are even more important. Protecting the downside is, is effectively protecting your life. So you'd be irresponsible if you embark on a grand adventure not to have thought through uh, you know, what if, you know, what, 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 you know, what, what, what if the balloon uh, goes into the sea? What if, uh, you know, you end up in a mountain? Um, uh, you, know, um, you know, what if, what if, what if? And, um, uh, and so, you know, if you're trying to do something for the first time, there, it is very likely that there's going to be, that things are going to go wrong um, because um, otherwise it would have been done before. Um, and, um, but, it, but it's critical that, uh, you, 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 you do everything you can to survive. Um, and if in the end you don't survive, you know, it's critical that you know that you, you did it, you know, you, you gave it your absolute best shot um, to, to um, you know, to come back and tell the tale. You can talk yourself out of doing something, right? If you, you protect the downside, and you have to look at what if, what if, what if, but you could easily, if you do that too long, say, you know what, this is just not worth it. So there's that balance, right? Where in yeah, and, and I mean, you know, if, you know, if you talk yourself out of it, fair enough. You know, I mean, you've looked, you know, you, 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 you um, I mean, there was one occasion where I should have talked myself out of something. I mean, um, I arrived in Las Vegas and I was, you know, any, any time I launched a new company, uh, there's a, a stunt prepared for me. And, um, uh, and I was told I was going to jump off, um, uh, a building that was 100 stories high, which in itself is okay. Uh, but the wind was about 50 miles an hour. And, uh, and I didn't have the guy I normally use as my stuntman with me. And, and as I was going up the lift to the top of this building, uh, the Palms, um, um, I just felt incredibly uncomfortable. And uh, I didn't know these people. And I just said to them, look, look I'm really sorry. I, I, I need to go back to a room just to think about this. And they said, well, look, all the press are waiting on the door. I said, you know, I just want to go back to the room to think about it. So I went back to the room and I paced up and down trying to think, um, you know, what am I going to do? And somebody came in and said, look, the press just want to take a picture of you on the roof. And, you know, I knew straight away I was going to make the wrong decision. I, I mean, you know, the moment I was on that roof, I knew I was going to jump. Um, so anyway, I went up to the roof um, there was, there was quite a high wall all around the top of the roof. And somebody said, you know, look, there's no wind. And I went, oh, well, I, you know, I know why there's no wind, but okay. All right, I'll jump. So, so I jumped and, um, the wind slammed me into the building halfway down. Um, and, you know, I arrived at the bottom. I mean, fortunately my, it was my backside that hit the building. Um, and, you know, thick pair of jeans like this, uh, completely to tathers, my bum raw, uh, blood everywhere. Um, and I just felt like a rag doll. I felt so stupid. But so, so sometimes you're, you, you know, sometimes your better instincts should, you've got to listen to them. And, you know, if you, if you keep questioning something and you feel the risks are unacceptably high, you've got to be man and man enough to say no. Pull the plug. Yeah. So, so give me, give me, um, or give us a, a, a failure in life outside of business. Um, whether it was, uh, the balloon, the around the world balloon attempt or, um, well, I mean, in our attempt to be 
Uh, the f first of all, the first across the Atlantic in a hot air balloon, then the Pacific, and then you know, the trying to be the first around the world in a hot air balloon. I mean, we had um, yeah, many sort of many failures on the way. Um, I th in fact, I think I got picked out of the sea five times by helicopters. So um, you know, so we we we, we um, uh, but nobody had done it before. And, and you know, so if, you, if you're going to attempt something that hasn't been done before, you're going to have to accept it's difficult. And, um, uh, and uh, there were some, uh, yeah, frighteningly sweaty moments, um, but we somehow managed to, you know, protect the downside and survive, at least get, get home. Um, you know, but we did get the record for the first Atlantic crossing, the first Pacific crossing. Um, we came... To within one day of being the first to go around the world in a balloon, and uh, and we just hit a blanket, a blanket wall of air just off America, um, and the balloon just you know flying at 100 feet wouldn't go through this wall of air. Flying at 35,000 feet, it wouldn't go through this wall, and we ended up um, crashing in the sea just off Hawaii on Christmas Day, um, and uh, fortunately being rescued by helicopter, um, and um, uh, and. It didn't matter. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's um, you know, somebody else um, a few months later managed to go the whole way around the world. Um, you know, the, 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 what, what, you know, the satisfaction we got was from, you know, trying these things, from these incredible adventures. I mean, we've flown over the Atlas, the Atlas Mountains, we've flown over Mount Everest, K2, in, you know, in, in, the, in the journey. Um, I mean, you know, just, you know, a, a, a completely ridiculous journey of a lifetime. Um, and I remember actually saying the day before, you know, we thought we were going to get the record. Somehow, you know, actually, I didn't say it. I was going to sleep. I remember thinking it. You know, if we succeed, it, it's almost too good. You know, we, we you know, like, uh, um, you know. It, it was it, so awesome. It, it, yeah. yeah, it didn't matter. You know, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was almost like, um, you know, we, we, I almost felt like we would have been spoiled to have succeeded because life's been so bloody good anyway. So... So, so, so somehow it was just it was somehow it was it was the right justice that we ended up in the sea and somebody completely unknown and, and, and beat us to it. So sometimes, um, well, I wonder all the time. Is it the journey all the time that's that's more important? It, than it's the uh, I think it's the it's the, the planning that it's, it's thinking up the journey. It's it, it's the camaraderie of the team working to try to make it possible. Uh, it's the technological challenge. You know, no balloon had ever flown it. 35, 40,000 foot before the highest balloon had been was sort of 8,000 feet. Uh, you know, could, could, could you fly in the jet stream? You know, would it, would the jet stream break up your balloon? Um, <laughs> it was the, you know, the team spirit of, you know, um, you know, of, of um, being, you know, being there with just one other person and, you know, for days on end and having to deal with, with you know, um, you know, the balance of relationships. Um, uh, and, you know, and it was, you know, the physical, uh, you know, get being, being mentally and physically fit for it. And, um, uh, and um, yeah, and uh, just, yeah, it's living life to its full. <laughs> All right, well, let's go right into morning routine. What do you, what do, you do in the morning? I, I saw you were sweating early this morning. Every time I see you, you're working out <laughs> like a Spartan. What's, people want a blueprint in our community on how to, how to tackle their day. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Loran Oils. Put your best foot forward in competition and make your recovery essential. Loran's 100% pure botanical essential oils are optimal for athletes looking for natural and holistic approaches when it comes to wellness and supporting performance. Spartans, are intense workouts burning you out? You can give your mind and body self-care and rest with Loran's essential oils. As you train, stretch, and meditate, use their 100% pure botanical oils in diffusers, rollerballs, massage oils, or lotions. Help boost overworked muscles and promote relaxation and focus so you can crush your race day goals. Loran's origins are in pharmacy, and they have been a trusted supplier for over 50 years to home consumers, spas, massage therapists, and personal care manufacturers always offering essential and base oils, waxes, and natural butters at affordable prices. Their quality-tested oils are obtained through cold press or steam distillation. There's no alcohol, added solvents, or other diluting agents. Lorenz essential oils are perfect for your active rest days, or for baking and cooking for your plant-forward needs. Their food-grade oils can add great flavors and great aromas to your favorite nutritious recipes as you fuel up 
train, and recover. Remember, you can save 15% off site-wide with your next purchase. Just use the code SPARTAN15 at checkout. Go to loranoils.com. That's L-O-R-A-N-N-O-I-L-S dot com. And don't forget to use that code SPARTAN15. What are you you doing in the morning? I I saw you were sweating early this morning. Every time I see you, you're working out (laughs) like a Spartan. What's... People want a blueprint in our community on how to, how to tackle their day. Well, uh, look, for, first of all, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I've al- always felt that you've got to be, you've got to be fit. So, um, you know, if you're, if, you, if you're fit, you can achieve anything. You know, the, 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 that wonderful feeling of the endorphins, you know, screaming through your body. I mean, what better way of starting the day? So, I mean, my own personal way of getting fit is... You know, I wake up, uh, uh, you know, really early every day, uh, and I play tennis with somebody who's um, a lot younger and a lot fitter than me, and we play singles, and you know, we give it every everything we can, and you know, end up, uh, you know, and 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 end up, um, you know, sweating big time and and having a lot of fun at this, at, uh, you know, as well. And then if the wind is up, you know, I'll go for a kite surf. Um, uh, you know, kiting's um, you know a lovely way just to get a, get away from you know the mobile phones and 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 just get you know get out on the sea, um, and um, uh, and then you know after that you know come back have have a you know have have a sort of nice healthy breakfast generally sometimes uh, you know sometimes the, um, not so healthy. Found your kryptonite. Uh, <laughs> and. Um, uh, and, um, you know, and then, and then I'm ready, you know, then I'm ready for the day. And, um, you know, I'm lucky I, I work, I've always worked from home. I work on this beautiful island. I've got my d- delightful, uh, you know, t- um, very, very small team here. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, um, in, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get work done. We always have interesting people on the island. Um, I met you on, on, on the island, um, a few months ago. So, I mean, it, it, there's always interesting people to learn from, um, and then in the evening, you know, back on the back on the tennis court. I mean, just you know, I just love to you know, love love doing fun, fun finding fun ways of keeping fit. And um, and then if I'm not on the island, you know, quite often we'll set you know every year we set ourselves a challenge. So um, uh, and by setting ourselves a challenge, and normally it's a family challenge, you then have to spend the three months you know getting fit for that challenge. And uh, so I think. Um, you know, I think having having a challenge to aim for is 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 always great. That's um, that's our big push in Spartan. Is um, we ask people to sign up for three races a year because I know that that then starts a whole slew of dominoes into yeah. effect. Right, that gotta wake up, don't have that extra glass of wine, go to bed a little earlier, and and without that, it is hard to stay motivated. No, I mean, look, I'm I'm. Uh, uh, you know, I did the, as I said, I ran the marathon a couple of years ago. I mean, I, I hadn't done any running for years. Um, you know, the first time I did, I ran a mile. Um, you know, if, I thought, how am I ever going to get, you know, 26 miles? Um, you know, then you build up to the two miles, four miles, whatever. And, uh, and you know, and, and suddenly your, your, fit, your body, your fitness just comes back. It's just fantastic. And um, I remember running up, a hill the other side with somebody half my age behind and I was I, I just somehow had got really fit and I was I was tearing up this hill admittedly every time I got to the ledge that you know I would then qu- quickly walk for a few things waiting <laughs> waiting for and then then start then start running again trying to just knock him knock him knock him out behind just demoralize him but anyway it's it, 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 it's um, as long as you don't have any knee injuries which which obviously is the bugger for all these things um, that, uh, then, um, uh, yeah, then, then it almost doesn't matter what age you are. You, 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 you can train your body to do pretty well anything, I think. There's a lot of um, executives. There's almost like a negative correlation where you see executives aren't that fit in general. I don't know if you, if you see that. You might not see it on the island, but, but we see it. And um, I don't think they realize that, and I think you agree with me, a healthy uh, mind comes from living inside a healthy body. And, and maybe they feel they don't have the time. Maybe there's uh, too many cocktail parties. What, what, do you, what, could you, what kind of advice could you give to executives? Um, look, they, they, they've just got to look after themselves. I mean, it's... Um, uh, and, and, you know, and just try to find fun ways of doing it. And, and 
I mean, you, you know, you can, you can skip cocktail parties. I mean, you know, once you've done a few, uh, you know, it's, they're not that much fun. I mean, but, but it's a hell of a lot of fun getting, you know, getting fit and getting healthy. Um, and, you know, if you are fit and healthy, A, you're going to, you know, perform in your life many, many years longer than you would otherwise. Um, secondly, whilst you're, whilst you're, you know, relatively young, you're going to perform a hell of a lot better. Um, uh, you're going to feel better. You're going to look better. You know, you're going to, you're going to, you're just going to get, um, you're going to be that much more successful. And um, it's just worth finding an hour or two a day for yourself. If you had to pick one secret to success, one thing that the Spartan community could do to help them in their job, help them uh, in their business, help them with their life, what, what would it, what, is it, is it being fit? Is it taking, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone? Is it, what do you think it would be that really uh, has kept you on on track? I think I think the I think look, looking looking for the best in other people. I, I think um, um, uh, you know I, I, I find you know throughout my life by never thinking ill of other people, by looking for the best, by you know, praising other people, by um, you know I mean even people who you know have been written off by most people. Um, you know, there's always something, always something special you can find in, in other people. And, um, and life's um, short and, you know, and, and the world is much smaller than uh, one realizes. And you're going to come across, you know, come across people time and time again in the most surprising places. And, um, and I found that just by hopefully never falling out with anybody, um, uh, you know, um, life, you know, life's that much more enjoyable and, and special. And as a leader, um, it's, it's even, it's even more critical to, um, you know, to be out there, uh, motivating, praising, um, inspiring. So avoid, avoid holding a grudge and, uh, don't burn any bridges. And yeah, I think if you fall, if you do fall out with somebody in life, um, and even if you think it's their fault, um, you know, just give them a ring you know, go out to lunch with them. This could be your ex-partner, your ex-wife, your, you know, and, and befriend them. And, you know, and, and you'll just find, um, uh, I mean, I, I mentioned, you know, early on in the interview, you know, our battle with British Airways and the lengths they went to put us out of business. After we won the court case, I made a point of ringing the chairman of British Airways and inviting him out to lunch um, and saying, you know, let's let's shake hands, and in fact, let's go further than that. Let's let's set up a charity together. Um, and in the last ten years of his life, we, you know, we became good friends. Um, uh, we did good things together, um, and you know that we put we put a bad moment behind us. And um, and it was definitely the right thing to do. And and I find that people who take take that attitude, um, uh, uh, you know, are, are, are that much happier for it. That could be one of the rarest qualities out there as not too many people could drop their ego and do that so um give you one example i mean i'm i'm, I'm you know very fortunate um to know archbishop tutu and and nelson mandela and and uh they did this in a much bigger scale i mean they, they basically said when they took control of south africa um you know, rather than doing what, say, America would do, which would be to execute our enemies, um, we, will, um, we will hold truth and reconciliation um, commissions uh, where people who'd committed atrocities against the black man will come, uh, they will apologize, um, they will embrace, and they will be forgiven. Um, and and in, that, in, the, in, they, they, in that way, they managed to... Um, uh, to mend their country, and South Africa is now, um, you know, a, a wonderful country of black and white people uh, working together, playing together, marrying together, um, and you know, the past has been put behind them. Powerful, because um, even if no one watched this interview, which is not going to be the case, um, I've got a few things going on in my life that that w very hard for me to, to, I'm pretty competitive. I'm sure you're competitive. And so that's, that would probably be my biggest challenge, but listening to you, um, it obviously works. Yeah. If, you, if you can get past, right, the past. Yeah. Life's short, you're right. And people will be suspicious. I mean, if you ring up, you know, somebody you've fallen out with and, you know, they're, they're, they're initially, you know, they're gonna want to know 
you know, what, why it is that you want to see, see them for lunch and, you know, what's, what, 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 what's the axe you've got to grind. And, and you just, um, you know, anyway, so, it, but, you know, but you've just got to get through that and get past and it and move on. Get past on. that and move on, exactly. Move on. All right. You told me you invested in over uh, 300 businesses uh, last time we spoke. Just a little joke. Was it 300 because of the 300 Spartans, maybe? <laughs> or is well, I'll tell, you one, I'll tell you one thing just to put it in perspective. Um, I was doing an interview on stage the other day, and Larry Page from Google was doing the interview with me, and he introduced me to the audience and said, um, uh, you know, this Richard, he's invested in three other companies. I've only invested in one. And I just said, I'll swap. <laughs> <laughs> they... Um, but um, good point. But anyway, look, we you know we certainly don't have uh, all, all three hundred companies are nowhere near as big as Google. But we've had a lot of fun doing it. Um, we've learned a lot because of the variety of different you know different things that we've done. Um, and um, well, what do you look for? Like, what? Um, well, in the past, uh, we just we only went into a business if we felt um, we could make it. A difference to people's lives, a positive difference, and that nobody else was doing it properly in, in you know, properly themselves. Um, now, most of the things I do are, are not for profit ventures. So, um, you know, we've set up, you know, with Nelson Mandela and, and Archbishop Tutu, an organization called the Elders that uh, go into conflict regions and try to resolve conflicts. We've set up something called the Carbon War Room to try to um, address the problems of global warming. We've set up something called the Oceanic Elders to help protect the species in the oceans that are being decimated. Um, Global Drug Commission to try to change government's approach to the war on drugs and get them to treat drugs as a health problem, not a criminal problem, and so on. So we've got a number of you know, not-for-profits, which is, which is what I put most of my energy into today. But we run them just like businesses. Um, it's just that we don't, um, we don't take any money out of them. When, when, so when you're investing, and, and they, now they've got really good altruistic motives, um, what do you look for in that individual that's running that nonprofit or that business? What you're betting on that person, right? You can't run right. physically yourself 300 businesses. So basically, we look for somebody who's um, a, a great mo- motivator, motivator of people, um, somebody um, who's a good listener. Um, you know, there are too many leaders in life who want to hear themselves and not not want to draw you know, draw out the other people. I mean, you know what you know. You don't need to he- hear yourself. Um, and, um, and I think, you know, I think the best leaders are leaders who, who, are, who are great listeners. By the way, since, since Spartan is the name of your company, do you, know, do you know what the word decimated, what the meaning of the word decimated? Well, I, I, I know it's to be completely destroyed, but, but something so interestingly, uh, interestingly, nowadays, people think it's completely destroyed. Um, but decimated was actually... Uh, something that happened if a, if a, if a, if, um, the, the, if a Roman legion lost a battle, um, they would line up all, all the men, and one in ten had their heads chopped off um, to make sure they fought. Um, the, the remaining nine fought harder the next time, um, and um, so decimated. Uh, <laughs> Desi, 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 not, com- not completely Desi, destroyed. <laughs> Desi is ten, and and it was pretty. Yeah, for the for the, the for those that had their heads chopped off, it was definitely decimated. Wow. I don't know how much we, we touched on it. Switch, let's switch to children again. Because I, I have four children I'm raising. And, and um, I read somewhere, I don't know if it was your, your mom did it with you or you did it with your children, where you dropped them off a couple of miles from the house and they had to make their way. Was that you? That, no, it was my mom. <laughs> your, your mom did it to you. And, and so um, how far should we push as, as parents with, with uh, stuff like that, like dropping them off, um, having them find their own way? Well, my mum would have been arrested today if she'd done that. Um, but um, but she she was a great believer in you know you know she wouldn't let us watch television. We had to be out there doing things. Um, you know, if if she felt it was reasonably safe and we were two two miles from somewhere, she would push us out of the car and tell us to you know make our own way there. And and if we got lost, you know, she'd make sure that she had a backup plan. plan. So. Uh, and life was that much more fun, you know, to, you should put us on a bike and tell us to ride 100 miles, you know, somewhere. Um, and, you know, it, it, it made you the way you are. You think that, that made the fabric, the DNA? In, yeah, into I, think, who you are? I, I think it, I think it, um, I think it definitely helped, you know, and, um, uh, and, um, and, you know, yes, there's always 
a risk when parents do that with their kids, but you know, the alternative of, of wrapping them up in cotton wool, you know, not letting them get out and play uh, is very sad. Well, um, and there goes the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, and um, can we not put the shark back in the water when I swim out of here? I will think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right, you. Cheers. Thanks. Look, I spent all my life trying to protect sharks. So don't make sharks sound, <laughs> sound so bad. I've been afraid of sharks for a long time. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and La Ruta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics, to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Loran Oils. After your next workout, help soothe tired muscles with Loran's affordable, quality-tested, 100% pure botanical essential oils. Visit loranoils.com. That's L-O-R-A-N-N-O-I-L-S.com today and get 15% off site-wide when you use the code SPARTAN15 at checkout.